In 2015, I was running a, a small business construction company in my little neck of the woods of Canada. At that point in my life, I was already thinking about, you know, the retirement, 10 years to retirement kind of thing. Actually, maybe about two years prior to that, I was already into thinking about that. And I started, investi and I started to investigate other countries. So primarily, I focused on South America. And I don't know, months went past. I got some ideas where I wanted to go. So I brought the idea up with my wife. Well, at that time, my, my late wife didn't really like that. She didn't want to move to South America. She wanted something familiar. If anywhere that she wanted to move, she wanted to move to, to England, specifically Stratford-on-Avon, because that's where her mother came from. Now, my late wife never lived in England. She never traveled to England. I don't know why she was so fixated on this place, but she was adamant that if she wanted, if she would move anywhere, that's where she wanted to move. So I didn't let that really deter me too much. So I kept looking, looking more into South America, other places, uh, Central America. I was kind of thinking about Mexico for a while there. Again, you know, like we tried discussing it, but yeah, she didn't want to, really want to move. I tried to explain her the whole idea of this was to have our money go a little bit further, you know, our pension. Yeah, she wasn't, she wasn't going to budge on that idea. Anyways, sometime in 2015 or 16, I can't remember when, she died. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh about it, but yeah, it was just kind of, it was kind of a benefit to me. Yeah, I loved her, but that's natural, right? But yeah, it hurt for about a week. I don't know if you watched the last video I did or one of the last ones that I did. Um, I'll leave a link below, you can check it out. But yeah, I'm the kind of person that when someone leaves me one way or the other, <laughs> I just pack up everything and get rid of everything that uh, reminds me of them. And then the second step after that is anytime I get the thought in my head, I just block it right away. I start thinking of something else. I, I've actually gotten very good at that in my life. I think probably within two weeks, I had a profile up on, on some dating site. I was going to try that for the first time. It didn't take me long to realize, yeah, that was going to be a no-go compared to walking up to somebody and introducing myself. It's a lot easier, quicker. I could vet them fairly quick. None of this chatting back and forth and sending pics or whatever, I don't know. Yeah, I realized that wasn't going to work out. So after that, I started winding down my business a little bit. I tried different things in my business see whether I could pick it up and get more interest. Try to get into a management position, but you know, it's kind of a downturn and everything happening at that time. But I ended up meeting this Chinese woman. She was actually coming to Canada at the time because her son had already been studying. I think he was just about to start his first year of university. So she was funding that whole adventure for him. Didn't take long before that uh, relationship came to an end. That experience in itself was interesting because if it wasn't for meeting that girl, I probably wouldn't have had any interest in Southeast Asia. Now, I went to travel to China at the time when I knew her, and I traveled alone to China. She wasn't with me. She was already in China at the time. So I went to, to China to see her. And there's a big, long story about my passport and everything else uh, to get there and all the paperwork I had to do to get there, which was kind of interesting in itself as a story. I even got a I can't remember an email or a letter or something from the government of Canada, you know, suggesting I shouldn't go there because there could be problems. I'm thinking to myself, who am I? I'm just some old guy. I'm not connected with anybody, not with the military or any official business in Canada. So, yeah, what would happen to me in China? So I went. Yeah, I found uh, China to be a very forward progressing country when I was there. They have this app called WeChat that they use. When I was there, it had somewhat limited capabilities, but now you can do everything with it. Pay your bills, do your banking. Everything is done through that. Mind you, your life is based on a credit system because of that app. And I'm pretty sure the rest of the world will eventually move to that. The government will resist your movement, you know, because you won't be able to use your app. <laughs> You know, if you start to speak out against them. They'll block you at every point. You won't be able to take a train, plane, cab, anything. That's the whole idea with that. Yeah, it is. It's very convenient, you know. You don't have to have a bunch of credit cards in your wallet. You don't have to carry cash. Digital currency is just around the corner, right? Every country in the world is trying to come up with their own. So not a far-fetched to, to think that that's what the future is going to be like. Now, as much as the cities are okay, yeah, they're great. You know, if you're a city guy, you like to go to the mall when you travel. Might as well just stay home and go to your mall. 
they're all pretty much the same they all look the same and they all have the same stores now and all the big brand names are you know all the malls now i don't know what the appeal of that is but anyway it's good for you if you want to do that i mean the only thing appealing to me about the mall was the the food court so many choices but yeah when i got out into rural china it was completely different it's kind of like the philippines i guess you could say without the karaoke <laughs> I don't know what it is, the people, the people there were just not friendly. Unless you're doing business with them, yeah, they're, they're your friend. Yeah, and I noticed that more in South China than anything, that kind of an attitude. When, you, when I traveled further north, yeah, you, you know, people were, seemed to be a lot more friendlier. Anyways, that's my experience with China. But yeah, then I, you know, started to travel to other places in, in Southeast Asia. And I, I'm going to tell you that they're all very similar to what the Philippines is like, you know, in the rural areas. In the cities, yeah, they're a bit different. You don't get as much English speaking in the cities anywhere, you know, like you do in, in the Philippines. But at that time, traveling back and forth to Asia and to Mexico a few times, I started doing Airbnb out of my house. At first I was going to do the whole house, but then, you know, after seeing a few videos about people complaining, it'd take them four or five days to clean up after some idiot would go in there and have some big party. Yeah, I didn't want to be losing money that way, so I ended up renting each room out at a time, which actually did really well. I, did, I was very surprised, you know. I had people that would share a room. <laughs> yeah, I had one big room in my basement. I think I had like four beds down there. I just put a curtain up between all four beds and I rented them out. I think it was like, at that time it was like 20 bucks a night plus $15 for cleaning. So yeah, I get a lot of people that would only come there just to stay one night. Yeah, so that worked out and I thought about kind of expanding the whole Airbnb thing and I went online and uh, tried to find somebody, I can't remember, there's some workforce or something online that you can use to get people to work for you, you know, while you're sleeping, they can take your messages and stuff like that. That wasn't working out too well for me. I couldn't really find anybody. So I ended up using a dating app to, to find somebody. And I did, I did manage to find somebody. But in my travels to find somebody, I, uh, I came across this girl who was pretty much straightforward, spoke her mind. And uh, yeah, I think that's what attracted me to her. She didn't want to do anything with my business at the time. Because she didn't have the time because she was working in the UAE and that means when you work in that country, you work 24 seven. There's no holidays, no breaks, no sleep kind of crap. You can read about the abuse if you want, but it's the real deal there. After talking to her and chatting with her for a while, I decided to take a chance and uh, go to the Philippines and meet her family to see what they were like. So I did, I, I went to Cebu, got to meet the family walked around the city quite a bit. At first they came with me, but eventually that petered off. Nobody liked walking as much as I did. <laughs> in the business that I was in, I was on my feet like 24 seven, you know what I mean? So I was really used to walking. And that was my experience. Three, three months here in the Philippines. You know, I walked around a lot, met a lot of people. I think I only went to Ayala Mall like once or twice because I was shopping for something. Oh, one time to get my laptop fixed. Another time I was trying to find a gift to buy for my wife's father. Yeah, so after that experience of walking around, meeting everybody, I hardly ever used the motorcycles or the jeepneys to get around. I preferred to walk. I spent a lot of time, I think, going to hardware stores because I was just kind of interested in that because that was part of my business. You know, tools and stuff like that building materials. Also kind of paid attention to some of the places that I passed by, like how they did construction here. So I found, you know, a lot of things here fascinating. People were very friendly. I mean, really, really friendly. And my in-laws, you know, were poor. They lived in a poor place, but everybody was happy. You know, I, I, I seen that and I liked it. So I knew this place was for me, you know, because I could live like that. If I really had to, I could really live the same way that they're living. And I kind of am right now, but the only difference is, is I got tile floor and painted wall. That's the only difference. The only difference between my place and the place that I was living to in, in Cebu was just that, painted walls and tile floor. That's what makes my place a little bit better. I arrived back in Canada just in time for lockdown. Those two years were probably the loneliest, most miserable time of my life. It's like doing solitary confinement. Eventually I moved to my mom's place, stayed there for a while. 
I talked to my future wife at the time quite a bit. We never really exchanged any words of affection for each other other than, you know, caring for each other. There was no, I love yous, you know, I want you, blah, 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 none of that, none of that stuff. I think in both our minds, we weren't sure if things would work out. But when her contract finished in the UAE, UAE, she moved back to the Philippines. I had to wait almost another nine months before COVID lifted. But as soon as I heard the news, I had my ticket and I was on my way. Yeah, so when I arrived to the Philippines, we spent time, we get to know each other more in person. Eight months later, we were married. Anyways, if you like my channel, please subscribe. My name is Norm. Thanks for hanging out with me. Peace out.